Hello everyone, welcome to lab number seven. The topic for today would be sensory motor deficits. So lab number seven, sensory motor deficits. Before I actually start talking about the lab, let's talk about your submission regarding lab number six. And also, please update the files that you have already given to us for, uh, regarding the final project. Um, OK, so let's start. So this lab number seven, if you look at the title of it, you can actually see two keywords which comes out, I would say. So the first one would be it's sensory. Second one would be motor. So we're going we're to talk about some neurological disorders, neurological disorders, which are related to sensors and our motor system. And disorder would refer to deficits, if you think about it. Now, the idea is we have a set of sensors that we use in order to make movements or do basically any single thing. Things that we see that are outside of our system, like our limbs moving around in space, uh, me trying to get this pen from here, figuring out the trajectory and adjusting my trajectory using my vision, using feedback, I'm doing this. However, if I didn't have my vision system working properly, in such cases, you can imagine what would have happened. I would have got the waterfall thing, or in worst case, I would have walked somewhere, somewhere else completely. So, you can intuitively understand this lab is going to talk about something similar, where it's related to sensors and our movement system, or the biomechanics, or like our uh, motor system, and how these are to relate it through different diseases. So, in this lab, you are going to select one certain disease, neurological, being precise, which creates some disorder in your motor control system. And you're going to explain those things by explaining the four questions that we have in the PDF handout. Now, the disorder that you are going to select cannot be taken from your final problem. Otherwise, this project, this single assignment would not make any sense if you link couple all those two things. Now, the other thing that you cannot do is you cannot talk about multiple sclerosis, which is here. The reason is, as you will see in the later lectures, Dr. King will talk about it. So if you actually just look into what he says, as I've directed you through this PDF, like the video and the time where he talks about it. In that case, if you just write those down, then, then there is no purpose of this lab. So, these two things you cannot do, and you have to be careful about that. And the thing that you have to stress, and I would stress repeatedly throughout this whole lecture, would be the disorder that you select cannot be related to your cognizance. So it has to predominantly affect your movement system, motor control system, and not your cognitive abilities. Till now, everything makes sense, right? Now, thing is, I would like you guys to write all this down because, as you will see, I need to help you figure out the answers through some keywords that I'm going to explain as we go. Let's start with question number one. First thing would be, the question asks here like, provide a brief description about the sensory motor deficit or disorder that you have chosen, and provide the, some video link. However, if you look closely here, I talk about only one video link. But I've decided that I'm not gonna give you that. I'm gonna change. How do I change it? Since you're working as a group, you're gonna come up with not one, but more than three, at least three being the least amount of videos. So 
We are talking about question number one over here, where you need to explain the disease that you are interested in researching about. Talk about the basic abstract notion of what's going on with the disease. So for instance, if you are talking about multiple sclerosis, if you had the chance to talk about it, in that case you might have written like multiple sclerosis is mostly related to our movement. So you start by narrowing down the implications of the disease into the realm of movement disorders or motor control, and then you start talking about different things, like how many type of, I mean, what different type of multiple sclerosis are there? Or maybe like, what is the general notion of the idea, like uh, what is the meaning of sclerosis or something like that? Here, the meaning of sclerosis is basically stiffening of some organ. I'll talk about sclerosis or derivatives of sclerosis again in the later part of this class. So, you're gonna find more than three videos, which the purpose is, it's gonna educate not only you, but it's gonna educate me as well. So, the purpose of the videos are not to fool around, but to educate all of us. So, it has to educate me, it has to be more than three. And now, since we have, I've altered this, I've decided that I'm going to alter the submission standards a little as well. So this is something that you need to write down because the submission standards are being changed for this lab and this lab only. The submission standards for this one is basically, it's consistent with the, our previous standards where we had to submit things online and then had to submit things offline to a printed version of it. Here, the only additional thing that I request you guys to do, when you submit online, in such case, please make sure in the post or the thread that you're writing down your names and everything, you submit three links to. So it's easier for me to find your information and like just click on it and I can go and see the video. As I've said again, I'm gonna say it again, it's like, make sure the videos will educate you and me. And it doesn't have to be like 20, 30 minutes of video. It can be small videos just showing the implications or some other things. Maybe the working mechanism. So, we are done with this part as well. Three videos, I've talked about it. So we are thinking about in terms of links. Provide me the links please, there. So, those who have just arrived, the only change that I'm making here in the first question get to get more than three videos. And still, it's, it's a group project. It still stays as a group project. And so in the first question, you're gonna write about general notion of the disease, like the abstract idea about what's going on and what not. Then you are also going, I expect that you're going to talk about the global health implications of the disease, like who are being affected and who are being not. The age, like say for instance, in cerebral palsy, it's mo it mostly affects children. So you're gonna, you can talk about like um, how many children suffer such kind of disease and what happens or stuff like that. So in a global way over there, you can consider age. The reason I said, I'm saying age is because as you know or as if you remember, I've talked about this before that in stroke, it's a kind of a cerebral palsy or cerebral palsy is a kind of a stroke. The only difference is it happens with deep kids. So the aged version of cerebral palsy is stroke. So these are things you're going to talk about. Now comes the most interesting part. That's going to make your life more interesting, give you a more different view of it, I guess, or may, will make you think about what you're going to write. The constraint for this is you have to fit all this information in 75 words. Why did I put this in this constraint? The reason is when I see what you write, I see that you write things that doesn't link together somehow. So 
I want you guys to attack all these different issues and still write it for 75 arms constraint. That is going to make you, force make you, think about it. And you'll have to rethink about it because you have to fit this criteria. So that's my only way of figuring out whether you're actually thinking about it. You will hate me, I said, but I mean, at the end, you're going to love me because you're going to learn. That's the purpose of me being here. So, that being said, I've talked about question number one. I've given you an idea about what sensory motor deficits are we talking about. We talked about the submission standards. We talked about neurological disorders, what you can do and what you cannot do. I'm again going to stress on the idea that this disorder that you would come up with has to predominantly affect your motor control system. And motor control system only. It might have some cognitive aspect to it. However, it should have the motor control thing to be predominant. So that is the thing that I am stressing over here. So it should be related to movement disorders and movement disorders only. Here, the meaning of only is a little flexible and you can actually, as I said, might have some aspects of cognitive things. However, this. You can consider about voluntary movement disorders which is what I would want you guys to emphasize on. However, you might actually come, up, come across different things where your involuntary movement things are being affected. What do I mean by that? Well, there are situations when some neurological disease would actually impact your heart movement or your lungs would not properly work. And those are involuntary organs. And so the thing is, you might want to consider those as you write or as you pick the disease. OK, so that being said, question number one has been addressed to PP. Question number two, we're talking about multiple sclerosis, that, with the one that you cannot pick. However, I can always use it to explain what I mean by question number two, right? Or what we expect in question number two. Question number two would want you to explain why is this classified, like the disease that you've selected is classified as a sensory motor deficit. You have to explain that. And as you explain it, you have to consider the mechanics as being said in the question. Consider the underlying mechanics of the disease or the problem. What do I mean by mechanics? What I mean is kind of simple, actually. But the answer is not going to be so simple if you work on it. So I would want you to look into the neurobiological perspective, or maybe cell mechanics of the disease, the neuronal dis degeneration, maybe, or the cell destruction mechanism, or the neuronal dis uh, like something destruction mechanism. So these are the things that I would like you to look into. Now, some people might ask whether SM, are these like move different and I have to ask, answer everything from different aspects. Well, if you think about it, all of these are basically related, interrelated. It's like the same name for different things. However, if you have to be pedantic, they're not. They're completely different things. However, in our case, we'll consider all of them to be the very same things. And so before I actually dive into a little more of a detail, I would request how many of you had a chance to take anatomy? Oh, cool. Guys, you had a too amazing. <laughs> Trust me, I mean, it's going to be wonderful. So the key word, as I said, is mechanism. And so you have to be careful when you answer this. And these are the things that I want to look into. Uh, I, I'm expecting to see in your answer. However, again, we have a constraint here. 100 words. So you won't be able to go and write things on your own. You will write things that make sense. So you summarize all those information. If you want, you can add pictures to help you better understand the thing or help me better understand the thing. As I've said, the purpose is not only to educate you, but to educate me too. So, OK, an example of this might be, say, for instance, ALS. You don't have to write this down because some of you might be using that as an example. I will also 
use the idea of multiple sclerosis. The reason I'm selecting ALS is ALS stands for amyotrophic lateral uh, sclerosis. And then we have multiple sclerosis. They are kind of similar in the realm that they are both derivatives of sclerosis, where ger sclerosis means, as I've said earlier, I guess, or I haven't, is it means, but yeah, one second. It means stiffening of some of the organs due to some neurological disorders. So that's what sclerosis means. Say for instance in amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, short term ALS, it's a neurological disease which would attack the nervous cells and would make, like do something that would degenerate it. What is gonna happen inside those nerves is something that you're gonna find out through this. And so it's gonna affect your voluntary muscle movements. And as you know, like some of the, some of the related concepts would be maybe no motor neurons would be affected. Maybe you will have some part of the brain stem not working properly, your spinal cord might be affected by it. And at the end, which will lead to the fact that your muscles would not work properly. And if you think about it, if you do not work with the same muscles for a while, your muscles would get weakened and you will lose voluntary control over those muscles. That's kind of ALS. Like in a very short term, that's how I would put it. Now let's talk about multiple sclerosis. So it's an similar to ALS. As I said, it's a derivative of the very same sclerosis idea. So it's a disorder of the central nervous system, which basically affects coordination. And you have, you know, you have some idea about the neurons and their ex axons. And I guess you also have an idea that those axons are coated by a kind of a material called myelin, myelin sheets. Now for some reason, if those myelin sheets are getting degenerated, in such cases, you'll have some implications. So the reason we have axons is basically to channel the electrical impulses that are being generated in the brain due to some excitation happening inside or outside of our system, system being our body, is when they, this electricity would try to pass through those axons, if they have the myelin sheet, they're directed properly and they go very fast. However, if you, if you have a degenerated myelin sheet, in that case, they will leak out and the impulse that is required to actually initiate an arm movement would be delayed if you think about it. So, now you can see how these are related, how, what I mean by neurobiology, or what I mean by anatomy. So you have to look at these ideas to actually come up and explain this question number two. Again, always remember it has to be related to movements, predominantly movement only can be a little cognitive. So, that being said, I'm stressing again, it's 100 words. Careful what, when you write about it. Do not write, I believe, I think, because there is no scope for you to think, unless you're doing research in this field for like 10 generations, I don't know. But, that being said, moving on to question number two. <coughs> it says, in fact, what are the typical symptoms related to this sensory motor deficit or disorder that you have chosen? So say for instance, here I can come out with stroke. In stroke, what happens would be like some part of the brain cells get damaged due to some reasons. Let's not talk about the reasons because these are the things that you are gonna come up with in, on, in a way to explain question number two. And so, those brain cells are dead. So, the regions that are being controlled through those brain stem cells, you cannot control. Which leads to the fact that you are paralyzed. Or you might have hemiparietic guides. You might not be able to work, move properly. You would lose independence. The worst thing that can ever happen to a person. So, these are the 
implications, defects that you might want to look into. When you write this answer, so if you're talking about effect over here, you can use bullet points, or you can even enumerate your the various effects. However, you will have to relate one of these into question number one and two. So you know how the mechanics work. You know what this disease is about. That that you got from one. Now you through two, you know how this disease works. Like mechanics behind the disease, the underlying things underneath the hood. Using those information and some other things that you might want to look into, you're gonna come up with an answer to explain why our body performs the way it does when we are affected by this disease. So, does this make sense to you now? So, constraints, 50 to 75 words. Yes, please. So, <coughs> when you're talking about the constraints of the words, I'm kind of confused with how you get the numbers. So for part three in the upper left hand corner, yes. it says for questions one and two, is that pertaining to the PDF questions one and two? Yeah, okay. so I've been explaining, so this is one which leads, uh, which relates to question number one in the PDF. Okay. Question number two, which relates similarly with the PDF. I'm just explaining what I expect of you guys. The reason I'm not actually explaining, because you guys are going to come up with your own uh, interest. I mean, you're gonna show your interest by selecting something that you like as a team. So, I don't know what what would that be. So I'm trying to give a broad perspective how I would want you guys to answer my questions. All this, well, not my questions, but I mean, the questions that are being asked. So, when you answer question number three, I would stress again that think about question number one, question number two, and relate all these in question number three. If you think about it, there might have been there might be a lot of implications, movement related implications. However, when you write those down or enumerate, you can only choose one and try to link them. Because I mean, uh, unless and otherwise, you will have to like write a lot of things, and you will not be able to make this constraint. Okay. So that's would be my advice. Now, leading to that is when I've talked about question number three. Which leads to the very last thing, which is interesting by its own way. Neuroplasticity. I think you have all come across the notion of plasticity of our brain. Our brain is highly plastic. What do I mean by that? Or what do you mean, understand by it? Can anyone give a kind of a, like a informal notion of plasticity or informal idea about the thing called plasticity? so you can be wrong too, and if that's not a problem, it should not stop you from answering. <coughs> so, what do you mean by neuroplasticity, or what do, uh, what do you mean by, understand by the fact that our brain is plastic? So, if you think about it, some part of our brain is related to the movement that we make in our right side. Just like very abstract, movement, very general, like this is what happens in stroke. So if something happens in the left side of the hemisphere of our brain, the right side becomes somehow paralyzed. That's the usual case. It's not that it cannot be paralyzed on the other side. It depends on how well the stroke occurred. And that relates to the five broadman areas. Now, some part of the brain is not working, and that leads to the fact that I cannot move my right hand. Sad case. But, so you, we want them to regain independence. How would we do that? <coughs> we'll look into different therapy procedures 
which is going to actually change their brain jet dynamics and maybe some different part of the brain would try to take, up, take that responsibility. That is going to be trained through physical therapy or different therapy procedures which are specially designed for different diseases. So, when you select your disease, like, of course you don't select your disease, it comes naturally, sadly, but that's what I, not what I meant, I was joking, but please. The disease that you want to talk about in this lab, when you select it, think about the therapy procedures and the neuroplasticity when you come up with this answer. So, different therapy procedures and how that affects our plasticity, and always, and always think about in terms of movement disorders as opposed to cognitive ones. That being said, I have introduced you to all the four questions and the things that I expect you guys to answer as you answer these questions. That being said, I actually haven't talked about what are the wording limits, although it's printed over here. I just wanted to be explicit. That would be 100 words for question number four. So how is like plasticity and therapy related for this disease that you have chosen to talk about in this lab? So do you have any questions regarding this? You did a great job of making it pretty easy to understand. Cool. So in that, in that case, let's move on to some different things, some examples. Watch out, buddy. <laughs> I need someone to help me out, but that might just fall. No. Okay, about this. I've pushed him around too much. <laughs> I can now. Okay, cool. I forgot to say ha Halloween, happy Halloween or something. <laughs> <laughs> there was a skeleton if you have seen it. <laughs> That's okay. That being said, let's move on to the very most vital thing that you I want to address, the citation issues. When you cite for this lab or any other scientific journals or whatever you write in any of your courses in UMD or anywhere else, if it's formal, in such case you cannot cite Wikipedia. No way. It's not a valid documentation. Although some people might argue, but in the scientific community you cannot use Wikipedia. So that being said, you cannot use Wikipedia for this lab. But you can have a general notion about the disease that you're looking for, but you can outside Wikipedia, that's what I mean. There's a link to it, if you think about it. So, and that leads to the fact that you can outside any blogs that you come up randomly come across. Those are not valid documents. Only valid documents are research papers or like, like maybe Harvard Medical School, some, some seminar or something like that. Those are documents that you can actually use. Documents that are written by people who actually knows what they're talking about. And Wikipedia is just written by normal people like us. So we cannot consider that to be valid. Okay, so citation issues are done. Now, the different diseases that you might want to consider as you approach this lab might be ALS. It might be epilepsy. It can be Parkinson's. That brings to the amazing fact that you have all seen the movie Back to the Future, right? Great. It's Michael J. Fox, who's basically uh, being affected by Parkinson's disease at a very early age, which led to the foundation called J. Fox Foundation, I guess, if I'm not mistaken. They're trying to find researching about it and figuring out what's gonna happen. I wish Dr. Brown could actually pick up the time machine and went back to the, went into the future to find a cure for it and come back. We have an interesting future if that was the case. Remember 88.8 miles? The speed that you were required to go like change, like go to different time zones? Two times, right? Like, five times. But we don't have Dr. Brown here. So we still are, we're still trying to figure out a solution to this problem, for instance, and any other problem that we've mentioned over here. We think we understand some of the things, but we actually have a lot of limitations. So, these are the things that you can think about. Parkinson's disease, or epilepsy. Epilepsy mostly occurs in the region which connects the two hemispheres of our brain. Can anyone name that region, please? Very close. 
the, the bridge that links two hemispheres of our brain. So that's you see over here. <coughs> so when you answer question number two over here, you actually need to consider CC and talk about how the CC is affected by those that disease and how that leads to the fact that how the CC is related to our movements, maybe. Now, in Parkinson's disease, it basically affects the base of the ganglia. Similar thing with Huntington's. You can think about cerebral disorders, maybe dystonia. Then we have cerebral palsy that I've talked about, stroke that we all know about. And we have DCD over here. DCD stands for Developmental Coordination Disorder. The word development, developmental would be the keyword, and you can understand it critically that it's related to kids. Then we have autism over here. The reason I had autism is just to give you a hint what you cannot do. Autism is mostly cognitive, so you cannot talk about it. When you think about epilepsy, you have to be careful when you explain this. You have to relate to movement, always remember that. Alzheimer's, we have a question mark here. So, as you select the disease that you want to talk about, you should consider movement. And movement only, mostly. And then we have vestibular disorders, right over here, which relates to the fact that it's related to our balance. Something offering there would not help you in any ways to balance yourself as you walk or do anything. So these are the things that you would want to look into as you select. However, in each section, each, there cannot be an overlap of topics. As I said, you have to educate me. And you have to educate one another. So maybe someone would like to go to the thread and look into cerebral palsy and they might just read your paper. From there, just to see what you how we approached it to get, get a synopsis of the idea. So we have we're going to have different topics now. On the count of three, now this is interesting, and you have to listen to it. On the count of three, you have to raise hands and select your disease. And the first the first team selects it. So so one, two, three. You can start. Okay, team number one. Let's select. Let's see team number two. Who's going to go second in choosing your disease? I saw this first, <laughs> and I saw that one, and that one was the last. I'm sorry. I, I, I was being like this. No, no, it's Guys, it's my response time is very good. <laughs> <laughs> but that being said, so you can choose any of these, or you can come about come up with something completely different, as long as it's related to movement disorders. And as you select. Consider the fact that you cannot talk about, you cannot match your final point. Because otherwise there's no point doing it. That being said, explanation or introduction to lab number seven is done. And you can choose, so team number one, what disease could you choose? Epilepsy, please. I think you might want to choose another one, please. Uh, as, uh, in addition. In addition. Um, pardon? Okay, so epilepsy, Parkinson's, team number one. Look into both of them to see which one you would want to look into. Or if you're like super interested, choose two. Who cares? The more you learn, the more better you get. Team number two. We're into dystonia. Dystonia. My only request is look into it, and if you think that it's not related to motor disorder, please come up with something different, just in case. That's a general notion for everyone. But remember what the other group has selected. So that so write down those as well. You cannot take those. How about Huntington's? We have the left part of the board completely open for selection. And we have one group left. That's a nice choice because it's gonna lead to the next lab. So vestibular disorder, you can do it, should not be a problem. 
However, you can see that there are other things that are open. You, know, you might want to write those down. So if you think that the vestibular disorder is like complicated to find, in that case you can select something different. Just so you know. That being said, it's done. It's training introductory introduction to this lab number seven. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. I'll feel if I've answered all of them, if possible. Um, uh, yeah. Any questions, guys? Any concerns? Yes. Good.